Thanks. Over to you, Tejas. Yep. Thanks, Arun. Hello. Uh, my name is Tejesh. I work at Graminer, uh, where we mainly narrate data, uh, data insights as stories. So today I will be covering on how to use finite state machines for managing front-end state. Um, but before that, a quick survey. Uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, finite state machines? Um, if you are a student, you probably might have go covered UML diagrams, uh, just like flowcharts. So those nice looking flowcharts uh, are just not a theoretical, completely theoretical uh, subject. They can actually be useful in the in management of front end state. And to illustrate that and the problem that we will be solving, I will start with uh, taking the example uh, as we go on building a 2D side scroller game. Anyone recognize this game? <laughs> Not Super Mario. It's Mega Man. Uh, we wouldn't be building this, but it will be very similar from the feature standpoint. Uh, so firstly, we start with uh, handling the uh, game uh, player's input. So we have a simple function called handle input. And whenever the button B is pressed, we set the image as jump. So B is to jump the player. And now. If you see the previous one, the player can only jump uh, for one instance. Like, So what's the issue with this piece of small code? The problem is we are not building a flappy board game, so there is no air jumping. So once the input press is recognized as the B press, we, we should put a Boolean flag and ensure that Further, presses, uh, further press of the button B, the, uh, the player doesn't keep jumping in the air. So when, uh, if, the, uh, if the user keeps on pressing the button B, the player also should be still be jumping only once. The rest of the button B presses should be discarded. So we add a simple Boolean flag called ease jumping and set the graphics image as jump image only if the player is not jumping. So we can move on to the next requirement. The next requirement would be to, whenever the uh, user presses the down button, uh, we have to duck the player if the player is on the ground. And on release of the down, uh, down arrow, uh, the player should stand. So how do we write the code for that? We start with one more if statement and say that if the input is uh, pressed down uh, and the player is not jumping, we set the graphics as duck, which means that if the player is standing, we basically set the graphics as duck image. And on release of the uh, down arrow button, we set the graphics image as stand, resetting the image. And if you think this is correct code, um, you're basically wrong. There's still a bug in this. Uh, any try, guesses? Okay, so when uh, so if we take the previous uh, the first feature which is jumping and when we are jumping if the user releases the arrow uh, down arrow then while the player is jumping the image is set to standing in between the jump. So how do we again uh, try to fix this? We add one more flag saying only jump if the player is already not jumping and if the player is not ducking. So, and we can keep doing this. Uh, if we uh, now want to add a dive attack, which is a ground pound, uh, we can add one more uh, if condition in on press of the down when jumping, saying that set the graphics as image dive. So that's one more feature addition. And that again breaks something. So this time it is when I'm, I can, so if I am doing the diving, so when I'm jumping from the height, uh, and if I press the button B again and again, I keep on air jumping. So again, I need to introduce a new flag called ease diving and keep on adding more and more flags to the code. And this is the common situation that we all will be in whenever we start with uh, uh, 
simple if statements. And we and remember, we haven't yet even started writing code for uh, shooting feature. So keeping this aside, uh, and, uh, how are state charts going to be very much relevant in solving this? Before even understanding what a state chart is, we need to understand what a state machine is. A state machine is basically a data structure or a container that has a set of states. It follows a few rules, which, which is like a machine can only be in one state at any point of time, and a machine takes a sequence of events as input. The way it works is it takes the input sequence of uh, events as input, input plus current state, it will trigger, uh, change the state of the application to the next state. So these might be some familiar UML diagrams that you might have studied, which is like start state, end state, uh, a transition from one state to the other state. The other important thing in the practical applications is the usage of guards or conditions, because most of the uh, practical applications will require conditional uh, setting of states. Coming to the previous problem, we can actually uh, rewrite the entire if statements code uh, by taking a piece of paper and pen and jotting down the, uh, listing on all the states that the player could be in, which is standing, jumping, diving, and ducking. And there were few transitions between these states which are limited to this. So what's the difference between this and the previous one? So here, uh, there is no air jumping. So if I have to create a feature like air jumping, I would have to add a self-transition to the same jumping state on press of the button B, which doesn't exist in this. So this is how we have learned the state charts in academics, but let's try to write the same thing using code. And there are multiple ways to model this in the JavaScript code, but I'll start with something very similar, uh, very familiar to us, which is the switch case statements. And remember the switch case statement is something, uh, a, I would consider that as an abstract of if statements because everything I can do in switch case statement, I can write it in basically if else if statements again. Uh, but we'll be using switch case statements. So what are state charts now? Uh, they are basically the extension of state machines, which gives us powerful features to introduce the concepts like uh, inheritance. Uh, we call here it as uh, hierarchical states. And there will be more powerful concepts like pa handling parallel states uh, and uh, setting up a next state using conditions, uh, which are called as guards, and activities, which are basically the actions uh, that prolong till the end of the state. So these are the uh, important con concepts when it comes to modeling it in real life applications. But we'll start with something very simple without, without any of the state charts and which is basically a state machine. So we refactor the entire previous code, with the same handle input function, but with a switch case statement. <laughs> we start with if the uh, player state is standing and the input is B, then jump. If, or else if the input is pressed down, then basically duck. So this piece of code is a lot more easy. Now, this is the same functionality as the previous one. But what's the real difference between the previous one and the current one? But before doing that, uh, let's try to add one more feature of this, uh, which is like shooting, which we thought of, we didn't do it in the last time's code. And see if adding a new feature here will actually break any of the previous code that we have written. So we already have the press B and press down while standing, our code written previously. Now we'll add the shooting condition, saying on, enter, on press of enter, the player should basically shoot. So I just add one more if condition and I'm done. I don't need to worry about did, uh, did this break in the jumping state or uh, ducking state? What about diving state? Is this going to again break something else in the previous code that I have written? No, not at all. Uh, but the problems with this code is that shooting is something that gets done in all the states. So I have to keep repeating this same if else, else if statement in all the jumping state and ducking state because Shooting is something that you could be doing in, uh, during the entire, any of the actions. So the problem, code repetition, and how do we reuse the code? This is where the state charts concept come, which is the hierarchical state. Something that is repeating across all the states is, uh, hints us that we can model it as a hierarchical state. 
So demystifying state machines code, how is this a big deal than the previous if else statements? And it's basically a switch case statements that we have now, and previously we have if else statements. So let's find out the differences. It's basically, we have this almost same looking code, but some, uh, previously we have the input condition at the beginning of the function. And then we are doing something related to the state. And now we are reversing those statements. The simple difference is previously we are reacting to the events that we have and setting the next state. The current one takes into account the of account of the current state and also the input and then sets the next state. What's the missing part is the current state. Great. Uh, state machines solve our, all our problems. So I was more like in this mood trying to state machine all the code that I have seen or I have written in the past one or two months. And that is when I have realized that I could apply this to a uh, dashboard. Uh, so um, I work at Graminer and we build a lot of dashboards. Uh, we end up building a lot of dashboards in the process of uh, getting, finding insights and then narrating them as stories. So one such dashboard is this. We have a multi-line chart and there were top filters uh, and again a lot more parallel filters uh, tabs basically and then there were few more filters i mean basically a lot of filters for exploring the data so here we have a set of regions uh, which are basically buttons and every time a button is active a line in the multi-line chart appears so this is this looks like a simple one uh, but the requirement will be uh, is little tricky because we may end up with deselecting all the buttons in the right side and that will show an empty chart. And why would a user would want to ever see an empty chart? So what we say is whenever we are keep this, uh, whenever we keep deselecting the buttons and we end up hitting the last active button, it shouldn't deselect itself and create an empty chart. It should basically select all the buttons that are there, thereby showing all the multi lines. And in the same way, when we have all the buttons selected, we need to uh, on click of a particular button, instead of deselecting it, it should basically select the only clicked button and rest of the ones will be uh, unselected. So this more or less looks like this. So I keep selecting all the buttons and, okay, I'm deselecting them. And click on any button should uh, only activate that. Yeah. So if I have to write the same thing in pure logic, is um, again we can use a if statement here. I just went with uh, switch case, so it will more uh, it will look almost like this with the first uh, condition saying if all buttons are active, activate the clicked button only, uh, or else if the clicked button is the only active button, which is the last button, and I click on that button instead of deactivating it, activate all the buttons, and in the rest of the cases just toggle the state of the button. So the first step in actually modeling a problem into a state chart or a state machine is to identify the states. And identifying states is something that we do not do when we write if else statements. And this thing uh, is actually the major advantage and the disadvantage of state machines. The advantage is that we get to do the upfront thinking, uh, basically, uh, do something that we clearly avoid. Uh, we now we are introducing a design phase into the programming style. Uh, but that also means that we need to spend some time and writing a if else statement would actually seem very convenient. But let's try to identify the states. There were multiple possibilities in identifying, identifying the states. We have almost uh, six buttons here. Uh, I'm not considering the previous and planned buttons. Uh, so, and each button has a on state and an off state. So that makes it two power six states. And we want to avoid a state where all the buttons are deselected, thereby avoiding a empty multi-line chart. So we can actually write this as a two power six minus one, 31 states, <coughs> and create a finite state machine. Or we could uh, create an abstraction over those 31 states and say that we only have three states. One is one button selected, the other is all buttons selected. The other is more than one button selected. Or the best is modeling the entire state chart as a one single state. So while 
during the process of identifying states, try to optimize to reduce the number of states that we will be modeling. So I'll, uh, good luck with uh, trying with a 31 state uh, programming switch case statement. Uh, I wouldn't be covering that up. I will be mostly covering on the three states, which is, uh, I start with a st starting state as all active buttons. On click of that, there's only one state that it can go to, which is make it uh, only one button selected. And, but when I'm in the one button selected, if I click on the active button that is selected, it basically goes to all active buttons. Or if I am selecting some other non-active buttons, I keep actually selecting them, and I get to a state of one plus active buttons. And if I, from one plus active buttons, if I keep selecting more and more buttons, I end up uh, with all active buttons. That's a wrong thing. Uh, or if I keep deselecting all the buttons, I basically end up in a one button. So that's it. That's still a state chart. We are using guards here. How do we model this in the programming? We can use switch case statements. Uh, I would like to avoid that I, uh, and use a better data structure, uh, a basically a dictionary. And it's a mapping between action, I mean a state and a particular action and what the uh, action should be. So it's, uh, the definition of action is the value. The action name, which could be like a click event or a change event or trigger event, any event. Uh, it could be a custom function, uh, custom event that you have created in your own front-end JavaScript. So if you have to model the same thing, what we do is the state name is all region selected. On click of any button, we basically have this function that will define the side effects. Here the side effects is to select only one button which was actually clicked. So event.target will give us the button that was clicked and we only make that button as active and rest of the buttons will be inactive. So all the side effects go into this. And in the same way, we can keep uh, doing the same thing repeated. And how do we actually uh, run the entire state machine? We create a function called interpreter, and every time uh, a click event happens, this interpreter function gets called, and we take the current state into the state variable and dispatch an action, which is basically calling the function that, is, that was in the value of the event and transition the state to the new state. So if I'm in the all region selected, I get transition to the one region selected. And during the transitions, if I want to trigger any events, such as uh, activating the previous and plan buttons, that is where this piece of code will handle. And all of this will give us a time travel logger because I can get to, I, uh, on every input event, I can get to see that, okay, I'm in this state and this is the event and this is the next state that I have gone to. So debugging this is very easy. So this is the one where we ha I have added actually the uh, DOM code that was required for it. But this is something that we have built by ourselves without using any library. And this, does, this is a finite state machine because uh, we do not have the hierarchy or concurrent states management system. And the most popular one uh, these days is the X state, uh, which, which is actually which actually provides all the concurrent uh, states handling or hierarchy activities, all these concepts uh, bundled into the nicely interfaced library called XState. The doc documentation is really good and there are a ton of examples out there. Oh, the best thing that I have initially liked after writing this piece of code and started to use XState is here I have coupled the event and the behavior of the application, which is basically the action, uh, tightly coupled. So what XState does is, it simply uh, goes in a declarative uh, for, uh, format and says that, okay, list down all your states. So here I have a current state, I can have current state, I mean like state one, state two, state three. And p on particular event of, uh, on, a, on an event called input, you go to the next state. That's the simplest way to define. Here we haven't actually covered the syntax for the actions. So, so this is, uh, to introduce the library syntax, this is a simple example. What it basically does is it toggles a particular, uh, let's say a button from green color to not green. And the event that we are triggering all the time is the change event. So if the initial state of the button is not green and a change event is triggered on that, it basically moves on to the green state. And from the green state, if, if a change event is occurred, so it goes on to the not green state, simple enough. 
and the, uh, the structure is almost like current state on a particular event goes to the next state. And where do we handle the side effects? So it gives us a uh, separate actions uh, dictionary where we define uh, set green as one action where it adds a class called green to the particular button that was clicked. And remove green will basically remove the class from that button or the field in this case. So this is the current state which is not green on a particular change event, the target state is green and actions is something that happens during the transition of the states. And it will run the set green function that we have defined here. What this enables us again is to reuse the same same action for multiple states. So if on, on move, moving from one particular state to the other state, there, there's a common action that needs to be executed. Uh, so this kind of interface will enable us that in a very nice way. So how do we model the previous uh, three states solution to the X state library? In fact, this looks a lot more easier to understand because if I have the initial state as all regions selected, which is the default state, and I do any click on any button, it basically uh, sets the next state as the one region selected. And during the same uh, transitioning of the state, this basically uh, will trigger an action called deselect other than the clicked button. So that is one way of, uh, so that's a three state model. And that still is actually complicated more than uh, using a particular if statement that we have seen in the beginning. So what's the best way to design this is to actually use a single state. And I have called that state as a default state because that's the only state that's actually be, uh, will be in. And that is like non-zero selected button state. So I just avoided the long name. And so what happens is there's a simple state, default state, and there are three click event, I mean, and it's a self-transitioning state. On every click event, it basically transitions to the same uh, state, but during the process, it will actually evaluate a uh, couple of conditions and execute a few actions. So this is a one-to-one -one modeling of our previous if else statement. So the one more reason why, ex uh, you, why we don't model the entire user interfaces as uh, state machines or state charts is uh, modeling the simplest if statements is not very intuitive as much as we have something like if else statements. But state charts uh, with x state, it is solved very nicely. We st still can do the same things. So all of us know that a state machine will be helpful when we have like uh, 10, 15 states and uh, five, six transitions. That's still a good use case for the state machines. Um, but what if we w want to actually model the entire application using a state machine? And this, and it depends upon use case. I'm not recommending to do that. Uh, if you really are into building a product or a platform where you are target customers or the non-technical audience who has to do drag and drop and design a custom and flexible application. In our case, we want to build a dashboard building application, but not at the cost of uh, losing flexibility. So a domain consultant should be able to do it on their own. And we want, if a particular custom feature is not available through the interface, the code generated from the interface should be handed over to the developer. The developer adds the feature that is not added and gives back the same code. The code should be uploaded to the interface and the interface should still uh, show, uh, show the updated code and handle it. Most of the solutions out there only does it in the one way where mm, the application user basically builds a uh, graphical user interface. Uh, <coughs> he models it in the GUI but, and exports the code. But once the code is exported, he can't again upload it back and actually rebuild on top of that. So this is where actually the X state comes because it's completely declarative. The declarative nature of this will uh, enable us to create interfaces. So uh, this is the same code which we, we are doing it in the single state. So we have a couple of conditions and on off, uh, the target is always the default because it's a self-transitioning uh, state. And the action is, uh, again, the same actions, we have actually put it in the actions tab, which are defined at the bottom. The guards are the list of uh, conditions that we are evaluating. Mm. Okay, so XWIS is one of the state charts visualizer. So what it does is it takes the state chart that we have created and create the, I mean, so if I up 
copy paste my code from here. Uh, let me update this. This basically, okay, Th that doesn't refresh actually. So I can actually copy paste my entire state machine into this and click on the update and that will create the states here. And this, this basically on, uh, on click of a particular event here, which is a change event, it basically toggles between the not green state and the green state. In the similar way, we can take the entire uh, code that we have here and paste it in the same thing, update. And now we see the default state, which is the single only state. And the rest of the ones are basically the guards conditions that will actually transition to the same state, executing few side effects in between. Uh, so what are the pros of state machines? Uh, if you, I'm, I haven't actually sold the state machines concept as much as the, the uh, outside front end community does uh, because they actually picked a lo uh, lot more complex examples. For me, I want to show that even a simple if, if statement can actually be modeled in state charts and that can actually be equally used for both simpler cases and the complex cases. Uh, and a state chart is a very great communicator. If you are in an organization where you have to deal with uh, uh, multiple uh, background people and uh, uh, and most of them is like non-developer audience, then you can actually, it's a common communication medium because it's basically a bunch of flow charts. You can actually communicate to a designer because d designer when designing an application thinks through flow charts. Uh, and what are the cons of this? So this might have uh, look, uh, this might lead to a lot of lines of code, but that was mostly because of the configuration. Even if it is more lines of code, uh, each line will probably be a couple of words. Uh, and the other uh, important factor is the uh, need for upfront thinking and modeling it. Um, so, what next, what can you do from, uh, what are the takeaways from this talk? Uh, or how can you actually, you start using state charts whenever there's a particular use case that you are figuring out. Statecharts.github.io introduces this concept of state charts very nicely. Uh, so this is one uh, page that actually talks about what, uh, what is a transition. So it shows the transitions in the particular state chart. In the same way, whenever I click on an action, it shows the entry and exit, uh, okay, on entry transition, on exit transition, the actions are the turn light on, turn light off, uh, there's a self transition. So spectrum dot chart, uh, chat is the uh, place where all the state machine enthusiasts actually ask questions and get uh, responses. And this is the link for X state library. 